Please rise for the invocation. With fanfare, we welcome you, students from far and wide, who by your presence are making this campus community new. We welcome you to stake your claim to this place and to ask and live your deepest questions about life and love and justice and truth. We welcome you to discover and be your authentic, always valuable selves and to trust that you belong and that you will never go it alone. We welcome you to seek joy and inspiration and to take these words of mystic and civil rights activist Howard Thurman to heart. He proclaims, don't ask what the world needs. Ask what makes you come alive and go do it. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. <coughs> you may be seated. Student voice. What do you think? 
<laughs> More briefly, when I asked, what is the greatest strength of IWU, here's what I heard. Job placement after graduation. It's a collaborative community for all people who enjoy learning. We have a wide variety of things to get involved in <clears throat> on campus and offer students so many opportunities to succeed. The really amazing faculty and staff members who work here. I've experienced so much support and kindness from many of the staff, giving each student the tools to pursue opportunities. I could go on, but I won't. Current IWU students sent me what amounts to 55 single-spaced pages of comments just like that. The excerpts that you've heard were not unusual. They were the norm. So if you're looking for challenge, but with support, if you'd like a lot of opportunities to get involved academically, socially, in student clubs and groups, if you want to explore a broad range of subjects, but also go deep, if you want the confidence that college will prepare you effectively for life after college, if you hope to find lifelong relationships here, both with fellow students and with faculty members, if you want to bring your gifts, talents, and passions to a community where they'll matter, then you're a titan and you've come to the right place. Welcome to your new home. So um, I want you to like, like also remember like despite what you might experience on campus, it's all, it's all about how you make it. So like the experience, you make the experience, don't let the experience make you. So um, we have over 200 registered student organizations here on campus. So this gives you a lot of opportunity to like kind of explore and find yourself on how, where you want to be on, where you want to be in the place on campus. So um, just remember like when you go to these meetings and like for these RSOs, like don't just be like a bystander, like actually be active and proactive in the meetings, like give your feedback, say what you want to see on this campus, because like I said, it's all up to y'all, it's, it's all up how you gonna make the experience. Um, something that I and myself both hold like very dear, near and dear to my heart is the, the issue of diversity. And so um, here on campus, like, we are the campus is doing so much to, to make strides in our like diversity. Like I, I strive towards being a diverse campus. So what I just want y'all to do is like, don't be afraid to go outside of your comfort zone. Like, make a friend that you wouldn't have made coming in here. Like, be be proactive about having these different like, uh, how you say, it? like not even thought processes. Like, just be active about like get, get to know somebody that's different from you. Because we need at the end of the day, all the community, no matter where you come from, no matter your background, like your race, religion, creed, none of that, like sexuality. Like, we all are tight, so we all need to just stick together at the end of the day. This 
actually this is my, my last point. Like, just be heard. Like, you didn't come here to like sit in the corner and be quiet. Like, you could do that. Like, you paid your tuition, you do what you want with it. Like, it's your money. <laughs> <laughs> but like, make a difference. Like, we, what, like, what can you say? Like, when you, when you graduate, when you walk across that stage in four years, what can you say you brought to this campus? Like, how can you say that you made a difference? Like, so just make a difference. Like, be proactive and just be like, be a decent person. Like, that's all it gotta be. You know? But yeah, that's all I gotta say. That's all. But welcome. I'm happy that y'all are here. I hope y'all happy to be here. And so like, welcome. <laughs>
You've grown up with smartphones, and it's likely hard for you to imagine the world without them. The devices we own and to which we have access connect us instantly to a spectacular amount of information available on the internet. So you don't need to come to college to gain access to information. You already have it at your disposal. We live in an information age. You come to college so that you can know how to harness that information for your own betterment. At IWU, you will learn how to find and identify the very best information. You will develop and hone the critical thinking skills that will allow you to make sense of that information and even reach new insights and conclusions from your work. You will also learn to communicate your insights powerfully in written and in spoken form. You will wrestle with sometimes contrary evidence so that you are positioned to make insightful, ethical, and compassionate decisions. These abilities have never been more necessary for realizing success and living well, for we live in a time that is characterized by significant and deep conflict and contradiction. Much of this is centered on the information we receive. And fittingly, the academic theme for the, the 2019-20 academic year is fact or fiction. A part of your summer was spent reading the book Educated, Tara Westover's lived life is a vivid and dramatic example of the power of education in distinguishing fact from fiction and the painful complications that sometimes accompany the liberation that an empowering education enables. As you go through your first academic year at Iowa, you will see events related to the theme, fact or fiction. These include talks, gatherings, lectures, <coughs> panels, discussions, performances, exhibits, all kinds of things. The first of these events, mark your calendars, is on Wednesday, September 4th, when the President's Convocation will feature Michael Shermer, best-selling author and founding publisher of Skeptic Magazine. He appeared in numerous documentaries aired on PBS, TLC, A&E, Discovery, The History Channel, The Science Channel, and also on shows such as The Colbert Report, 2020, Dateline, Unsolved Mysteries, and yes, and Oprah. <laughs> he will speak, and I quote, on the nature of truth and why people believe weird things. Both of these are intertwined because the deeper question is why any of us believe anything at all and how we determine what are true beliefs from false beliefs. It will be a rich experience delivered by, directly by, an internationally acclaimed scholar. In your college years, I will bring to campus world-class talent that complements outstanding engagement in the classroom with your faculty, staff, and your fellow students. I urge you to dive deep and take full advantage of such opportunities to learn from the very best. Start with that on September 4th and Michael Shermer. Now to return to the summer reading program. One of the features of this IWU program is a summer reading essay contest. It is my honor to let you know whose essays have been recognized for their excellence. So the first prize in the IWU Summer Reading Contest is awarded to Elise Damasco for her essay, A Multitude of Truths. Elise, would you please come forward and accept this certificate? Professor of Chemistry here. 
as was made clear in the material supporting his Kemp nomination, uh, award nomination, Dr. Redditch is a beloved and highly student-focused teacher. His courses include general chemistry, physical chemistry, or PCHEM 1, which is thermodynamics, PCHEM 2, which is kinetics. Across the country, PCHEM is considered to be among the most challenging college-level courses, but Professor Reddick makes PCHEM interesting, approachable, and even fun. He maintains a vigorous research program that examines liquid gas exchanges, work that has included students on environmental problems such as photochemical smog, greenhouse gases, and ozone depletion. This research invariably involves IWU students who not only work bench side with Dr. Redditch, but also have opportunities to bring that work forward for publications or for presentations as well. He is indeed the model of the Valley model. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Redditch.
Monday uh, with the formal launch, uh, safe and secure. That being arranged, then all I have to do is point out some navigational landmarks to you uh, to get you headed down the river the right way. Uh, so the first such landmark is your gateway course for first year experience. A gateway is a formal starting point, much like the St. Louis Gateway Arch is kind of the formal starting point for the Western expansion made possible by the Lewis and Clark expedition. Uh, while gateways and first year experiences all differ in their specifics, they each are constructed with the same blueprint for building a solid foundation. This foundation includes an introduction to the process of intellectual inquiry and the development of critical thinking skills. The course is a vital training session to help you navigate many future challenges, not only in subsequent college courses, but also the uncharted waters beyond graduation. A second landmark on this early stretch is the intellectual theme for this academic year you've heard of, fact or fiction. Some of the dangerous whirlpools here are named fake news, alternative facts, information silos, political polarization. Well, for thousands of years, humans have asked questions like what is truth and how do we determine what that gray area is between fact and fiction. Originally, only philosophers concerned themselves with those kinds of questions. But as their import became more clear, these questions grew and eventually permeated every area, not only of academics, but of everyday life. Most of your courses here will address how claims in that discipline may or may not be validated. In addition, you've heard that there are a variety of co-curricular activities happening this year that will also help you discern fact from fiction and thereby steer a true course. Our third landmark is general education. As a liberal arts university, IWU is committed to each student's holistic development, not just showing them some tricks of a specific trade or grooming you to fit a certain professional profile, though your major courses will make you an expert in your field of study. The majority of courses outside your major will be general education courses, which are offered in every <coughs> academic department. General education provides enriching opportunities to experience a broad sample of ideas and methodologies. This is the basis of the liberal arts, those studies that liberate us, making us free, free from ignorance, and prepared to take on the wide range of responsibilities of personal independence. These include financial responsibility in a global economy, social interactions in a multicultural world, and the duties of citizenship in a democracy. General education is not a detour from your career path. A breadth of knowledge and experience prepares you not only for your first job, but for the multiple careers you will have in your working lifetime. General education is also vital to doing well in that first job or profession. Permit me please two examples, if I may. Uh, when Mary Martha Lewis was first appointed to head the Corps of Discovery, he spent a year after that appointment, getting ready by studying and being tutored. He first tackled astronomy because he needed that, not just for navigational purposes, but to make sure he could get the latitudes and longitudes on those very important maps he was going to draw. He studied geology and mineralogy to make sure he could identify landmarks. He brushed up on his earlier lessons in botany and zoology to better understand those challenges during the journey and he read everything he could find about Native Americans and North American geography. He even took a crash course in medicine so he could serve as a doctor for the Corps. Note that the expedition's charge was just to find a river route to the Pacific and draw a map, but Mary Ruby Lewis recognized that a broad knowledge base and a diverse skill set were needed in any challenging team project, doubly so if one had leadership. A second, more modern example I draw from my own personal experience as uh, serving on the pre medical advisory committee. Until recently, medical school was required undergraduate coursework only in biology, chemistry, and physics. Then recognize the importance of a more general education to success in the practice of medicine. Those requirements have now expanded to include sociology, psychology, and statistics. The fourth and final guidepost I will mention is a bit farther down the river, typically cited during the fourth year of your college. It is known as signature work, 
and as a guided individual learning experience connecting each student's academic development at IWU with the outside world. This work is unique to each student and his or her interests. It serves as a capstone IWU experience, and it can serve as a portage for your next voyage of discovery, be it graduate school, professional school, or that first job. I hope you enjoy your college experience. I hope you avail yourself of all the resources IWU provides. I'll put in a particular plug for using the faculty. I'm at your academic advisor and all those teaching your courses. And I hope you'll look around at your fellow travelers here tonight and resolve to be a good crew member, crew member. <coughs> assist and encourage each other. All are in the same boat. Thank you. Dr. Rick, and this distinguished group on stage, it's just my pleasure to add my welcomes to the many voices you have heard throughout the day today, but particularly tonight. Uh, my name is Carla Carney Hall. I have the pleasure of being your Dean of Students. And as the Dean of Students, I am charged with advocating for you and your experience, for helping make sure that you achieve your best success for helping create a dynamic, inclusive campus community with deep roots. Today marks the beginning of all of those things. Tonight, you gather by the Aspiration Fountain as the beginning of a shared experience. A shared experience of thinking about your goals and your aspirations. And when we talk about goals today, the reality is that might be a bit too grounded Goals reflect priorities. Priorities reflect values. Values reflect purpose. Purpose inspires dreams. Dreams fulfill our calling and our mission. The Aspiration Fountain is appropriately named. Aspiration invites reflection by making a public commitment to some goals. Aspiration requires action. You must be actively engaged in achieving your dreams. Aspiration inspires success. Your dreams surrounded by the dreams of others are nurtured, strengthened, and encouraged. These lofty goals call on you to take stock in who you are, be open-minded, explore your values, be breakthrough. How many times have you heard that in your journey? In the, in the moments of being breakthrough and in a way of life. Be an engaged citizen, not just of Illinois Wesleyan, but of the world, by leading and creating communities of inclusion. For this week and this semester, there are many goals, but not likely ones that you'll find written by aspiration, except maybe by a few of your orientation leaders. Play the dorky icebreakers. Right? Nothing unites people like common silliness. Meet someone new every day this week. Develop genuine friendships with someone different from you. Read and engage the books in the human library on Friday. What an amazing way to meet other people and hear their stories and learn from one another. Have a heated conversation about something that matters to you. Learn controversy with civility and respect. Ask for help. We all need help sometimes. In the spirit of getting to know each other a little bit better, I want to tell you a little bit about the 450 or so folks uh, gathered here today. Um, the admission staff absolutely adore you. They have loved every interaction, contact, the, the visits to campus, to your schools, and they tell us these things. You come from 22 different states and one territory. California, oh, feel free to shout out if it applies to you. From California to Louisiana, Colorado, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Georgia, and many, many states in between. Just to name a few. You 
you are interested in pursuing 39 different majors, and if you haven't picked a major yet, don't worry. Just under 10% are undeclared, which means you're doing the liberal arts the way they were intended, open-minded and thoughtfully, knowing that at least 50% of you will change your mind before the end of this year. <laughs> 73 of you have a close family member or a relative who attended Illinois Wesleyan, and you're making this choice as a family to come back to this wonderful home. And there are 57 first-generation college students in this class. You are diverse, as Q talked about. 119 students in this class identifying, self-identifying as students of color, over 27% of this incoming class. For the most common names, so this is the part that I tell you, so when in doubt, what should you call someone if you've forgotten their name? Um, when in doubt, the most popular woman's name this year is Emily. on the men's side. Because the question, and I asked a student on Saturday, do I get to combine two sort of similar names? Do Matt and Matthews and Mike's and Michael's get combined or not? What do you think? No. So combined, my Luke and Lucas's are seven. Okay? But solo, Ethan. to show that you are breaking through. In this group, there are two National Merit finalists. All right, shout it out, two National Merit finalists. There's someone who hosted a benefit for a friend who was a quadriplegic and raised several thousand dollars to their benefit. There's someone who saved a friend from choking using those lessons learned in Boy Scouts. There's someone who lived in the Colonial Williamsburg Museum we have a twin in our midst. We have a, we have a colleague who re rebuilt a 1970 moped when he was in the seventh grade. We have, a, we have a colleague who designed and built his own board game, Clash of Nations. A classmate who published a fantasy novel in middle school, available on Amazon. <laughs> Someone whose nickname is Steak Sauce. <laughs> we, have a, we have someone who is looking for a roommate who will do what his parents did, read medical journals and textbooks to him before going to bed so he could sleep well. <laughs> We have a classmate who raises and breeds reptiles and amphibians. We have a classmate who started a sewing business for kids. And we have many who have studied abroad in high school in Japan or Cambodia or Italy. You all have done so many interesting and amazing things and you're bringing those talents and skills to Illinois Wesleyan with you. The admission staff could have gone on and on, but I am conscious of our time. I know you all want to continue to get to know each other without the dean involved. Today marks the beginning of your college career with some important symbolism. You connected an aspiration to declare your goals and dreams for the future. You could have gone there alone, but instead you chose these classmates to support your journey and challenge you to meet those goals. You are surrounded by the excellence of the class of 2023. Yes. In a few moments, you will hear the alma mater, many of you for the first time. You'll hear from another very talented classmate in the singing of that class song that unites us all. 
and it marks another powerful connector. As we leave here, we will gather at the camp commencement plaza for a class photo, a photo that marks the beginning and forecasts the future. In four years, this class, these classmates will gather again on the Kemp Commencement Plaza, but in fact, this class will gather, but you will be different. Not different in your name, perhaps, or your background, but you will be forever changed by your education, your friendships, and your experiences. You will be changed by your goals, your priorities, your values, your dreams, and your passions. And as one graduate has said, I think my freshman self would be very proud of the person I have become. Take stock in who you are today so you can celebrate who you are becoming. Please rise and listen carefully to the singing of the alma mater by your classmate, Alyssa Vernier, and Doris Hill on the organ. So please join for the singing of the alma mater. is concluded but please remain standing while the platform party recesses and then have a wonderful evening have a wonderful week turn Titan <laughs>